guys, San Francisco Corn Man back with another video. Today in the bonus Sweetcorn History segment will be on the War of 1812. The presidential election of 1812 lasted from October 30th, 1812 to December 2nd, 1812. There were 217 electors and 109 electoral votes were needed to win. This was the first presidential election to take place during wartime. It was also the first presidential election where someone born after the signing of the Declaration of Independence would be eligible to run, although nobody did so. The Dem Democratic Republican candidates for presidential nominee were President James Madison of Virginia, Vice President George Clinton of New York, and Lieutenant Governor of New York, DeWitt Clinton. Or DeWitt Clinton, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'll just use, do DeWitt. DeWitt Clinton was the nephew of George Clinton. However, the 70, the 72 year old vice president's health declined, and Vice President Clinton died on April 20th, 1812. This opened the first vacancy in the vice presidency ever. Therefore, it was clear no matter what, a new vice president would need to be chosen. Some anti war Democratic Republicans wanted DeWitt Clinton to fill the office his uncle previously held. However, Clinton was inconclusive on the issue, and as such, the nominating caucus ignored him when casting the votes for vice president. But first, James Madison won the nomination in the caucus, winning 81 of the 82 voters. One member of the caucus declined to vote. As Clinton was ignored, the two vice presidential candidates were Governor of New Hampshire John Langdon and Governor of Massachusetts Elbridge Gerry. Langdon won 64 electoral votes, six, no, sorry, not electoral, Langdon won 64 votes, while Jerry won 16. However, Langdon declined the, declined the nomination, believing he was too old for the office. Langdon was 70. Therefore, a second vote was held, and Elbridge Jerry was nominated to be Madison's running mate. Outraged over the renomination of Madison, anti-war Democratic Republicans attended a caucus in New York and nominated Clinton for president. Although Chief Justice of the Supreme Court John Marshall of Virginia was considered for the Federalist nomination, he declined to run. Therefore, the Federalists ultimately decided to support Clinton for president. The Federalists formed a fusion ticket with Clintonian Democratic Republicans and nominated Pennsylvania Attorney General Jared Ingersoll for Vice President. Some Federalists, however, were unsatisfied with Clinton, as he was a Democratic Republican. These Federalists nominated former Minister to Great Britain Rufus King for President, and former Governor of North Carolina William Davey for Vice President. As mentioned earlier, this was the first presidential election to take place during wartime. As such, the War of 1812 was the main issue of the election. Madison was in favor of the war while Clinton was inconclusive. To supporters of the war, Clinton promised to continue fighting, but to those who were opposed to the war, mainly Federalists, Clinton promised immediate negotiations and blamed the war on Madison. The results. James Madison won the election, winning 128 electoral votes, from Vermont, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Louisiana. Madison also won 140,431 popular votes, or 50.4% of the total. DeWitt Clinton won 89 electoral votes, winning New Hampshire, New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Delaware. He also took five electoral votes from Maryland. Three Clintonian electors voted for Madison's running mate, Elbridge Jerry, as opposed to Ingersoll for Clinton. He also won 132,781 popular votes, or 47.6% of the total. Federalist Rufus King won no electoral votes, but 5,574 popular votes, or 2% of the total. Madison was re-inaugurated on March 13, 1813, and Elbridge Jerry was inaugurated as vice president as well. Alright, now for Sweetcorn history. There were many reasons for the War of 1812. For the Americans, British impressment of American sailors, lack of acknowledgement for United States 
neutrality during the Napoleonic Wars, and British support for Native Americans. For the British, James Madison's deal with French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, I don't, I forget how to pronounce that, and to create a Native American state in North America. The war started on June 18, 1812, with New England Federalists strongly opposed to the war, calling it Mr. Madison's War. New England merchants opposed the war as Great Britain was their biggest customer. Pro-war riots erupted in Baltimore, Maryland as a response to newspaper Federalist Republicans' anti-war statements. In order to protest the war, New Englanders boycotted the war and state militias were not allowed to fight in the war. Unlike the powerful British Navy, American forces were relatively weak. Madison called for 50,000 army volunteers, but only around 5,000 men enlisted. To make up for this, the United States Army began enlisting African Americans, both free and enslaved. Many slaves were actually enthusiastic, hoping that fighting in the war would win them freedom. Unfortunately, this was not the case. Understanding that the British Navy was too strong, Madison chose not to fight a war at sea, but rather to lead a land campaign in Canada. However, the easiest routes to Canada were through New York and New England states, but these states would not allow this due to their opposition to the war. Therefore, the city of Detroit in the Michigan ch Territory was chosen as the route to Canada. To lead the invasion, Madison chose governor of the Michigan Territory as well as Revolutionary War veteran William Hull. However, upon reaching Canada, Hull was informed of the Shawnee tribe's ambush on Major Thomas Van Horn's troops. Hull fled back to Detroit. Before a battle could even start, Hull surrendered to British General Isaac Brock. For his cowardly actions, Hull was later court-martialed in a trial presided by senior officer of the U.S. Army, Henry Dearborn. One of the prosecutors was New York State Senator Martin Van Buren. Ohio State Senator Robert Lucas testified against Hull. Hull was convicted of neglect of duty and sentenced to execution by firing squad. However, President Madison, recognizing Hull's service during the Revolutionary War, commuted the sentence to merely remove Hull from the army. Um, with no opposition, Brock w uh, with no opposition, Brock and his troops went to the Niagara River and planned to invade the state of New York. However, American troops, led by Captain John Wool, managed to attack Brock's camp in Queenstown Heights, Canada. During the battle, Brock was killed, but the lack of reinforcements for um, the Americans helped the British. New York militiamen eventually reached the river, but weren't allowed to cross the river to help Wool's regiment as their orders were to defend New York and not cross the river. Therefore, the British massacred Wool's troops and it was a British victory. In 1813, Major General William Harrison defeated Tecumseh's Confederacy during the Battle, during the battle of Thames, where Tecumseh was killed. Tecumseh was a major ally of the British during the war. On August 24, 1814, the British burned Washington, including the White House. Um, in 1814, the British also told Madison that they were um, ready for peace talks, uh, even though this was the year that they burned Washington. But yeah, Madison sent a delegation consisting of Al um, former Secretary of State Albert Gallatin of Pennsylvania, US former U.S. Senator John Quincy Adams of Massachusetts, former U.S. Senator John James Bayard of Delaware, former U.S. Representative Henry Clay of Kentucky, and diplomat Jonathan Russell of Massachusetts. However, in order to make peace, the British made a list of demands, including an Indian barrier state in the Ohio River Valley. Americans could not fish off the coast of Newfoundland. The Canadian border moved to give access to the Mississippi River. Um, however, Clay believed the British were eager for peace and would be willing to accept it for much less. Eventually, the British caved in, and on December 24, 1814, the Treaty of Ghent was signed. The treaty had things go back to how they were before the war. However, it allowed for better relations between the countries. Although the war ended with the Treaty of Ghent, word had not reached the United States yet. As such, the last battle of the war was fought on January 15th, uh, not sorry, January 8th, 
Uh, yeah. The last battle of the war was fought on January 8th, 1815 in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Americans... The Americans... The Brit British forces attacked the Americans. However, General Andrew Jackson led an excellent defense during the battle. Um, the Americans won with um, British Major Generals Edward Pakenham and Samuel Gibbs being fatally wounded. 285 British were confirmed dead compared to only 13 Americans. Fun fact, the national anthem of uh, the Star Spangled Banner was written during the war following the Battle of Baltimore. Um, Alright, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable and informative. Uh, check out the Discord server. Link is in the description. Uh, so, yeah. See ya.